Fan Appreciation Month here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, I'm taking a look at a horror comedy from 1987. That movie is House 2, The Second Story. Now, a couple weeks ago, I covered the first house, and uh, I said that if you looked at the first film through a very, very specific point of view, it is quite possibly the most dark and depressing thing ever committed to film. And after finally seeing the trailer for the first house on the DVD for this thing, they were certainly they were certainly shooting shooting for something that was going to skew a little bit more towards horror than than towards comedy. And uh, as some of you may may also remember, I mentioned that the trailer for House Two is on the DVD for House, and it played up House Two as a straight up comedy, which I am absolutely looking looking forward to because if there's anything I love more, or correction, if there's anything I just love, period, it is it is horror comedies that skew more towards comedy than horror. I've always found those to be incredibly entertaining. And this thing could very well be incredibly, incredibly fun. But there is also that slight chance it could absolutely suck hard. And the only way I'm going to find out if it's if it's any good at all is if I shut up and I push play. And I'm going to do that right now. So without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out House 2, The Second Story. Okay, let me see if I've got this perfectly clear. So, Jesse has decided it'd be a good idea to dig up his great-great-grandfather's corpse because there is the off chance, as slim as it may be, that his great-great-grandfather was buried with a mystical, incredibly valuable crystal skull because he, because he read about how the Aztecs were buried. I don't mean to break this to anybody, but Jesse is white. His great-great-grandfather was white. I do not give a front-flipping fuck where he found the skull. I don't really think that he would start using Aztec burial, burial rituals because he was there once. So, not only did Jesse's great-great-grandfather actually have the skull in his coffin with him, they also apparently scooped out his eyes and replaced them with rubies. Interesting. Alright, well, hang on, hang on. So, this fucking crystal skull is able to just randomly conjure barbarians out of nowhere? Is anyone even going to attempt to explain why that happens? I'm really kind of curious now. Okay, that is sort of interesting. I never, never would have guessed if you would have crossed a beagle with a fucking, with a fucking, like, caterpillar, it would wind up kind of cute. You definitely learn something new every day. That thing really is just genuinely freaking adorable, guys. So, whoa, 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 whoa. So this guy, who I should mention is a fucking, is a fucking electrician. Keeps, keeps a cavalry saber in his toolbox in the off chance he finds a portal to a parallel dimension in a wall he happens to be working on. I'm not even going to pretend to make, to make, to make fucking sense of that because it doesn't make any sense. That guy is clinically retarded. Well, guys, that was House 2, the second story. Let me shut that off. All right, well, I can say that um, this one is nowhere near as dismal or as depressing as the first house, but then again, that really isn't saying, saying much. I still say that House is probably the darkest goddamn thing I've ever seen. Well, maybe not darkest movie I've ever seen, but certainly one of the most absolutely depressing pressing ones, again, when you look at it through a certain, you know, point of view. House 2, at least, is trying to be a lot more light-hearted. However, though, it also kind of sort of 
is a little bit clumsy with everything. Now, what I mean, I'm talking about writing now, is that really, damn near everything that happens in this movie happens through sheer sheer coincidence. Nothing here, nothing here ever ever happens because somebody genuinely figured it out. It's just, oh, well, f why not? All right. A really good case is shortly after Jesse moves in, he finds this photo of his great-great-grandfather holding on to a crystal skull. And he notices that it doesn't match the picture of a crystal skull on the cover of a book talking about ancient magical legends. Okay, um, so that could mean that there are multiple crystal, you know, skulls, and that is a theory that people have played with for many, many years. Um, so he then instantly assumes that there are only two in the world, because the book only says that there's two. And because his great great grandfather dug it up from dug it up out of some old out of some old Aztec ruins, he decides to look up Aztec burial you know rituals because why the fuck not? At which at, at which point then his friend goes, hey dude, why not? Let's go fucking dig him up. And what do you know? Sure enough, right there is the crystal skull. Why? Because of absolute coincidence. I genuinely think it would have been, it would have made a little bit more sense if the damned thing wasn't there. But still. You know, so we have moments like that. We have moments when uh, he has to call in. He has to call in an electrician because, uh, because well, the fucking wiring in in the house is all messed up. And what do you know? Our fucking electrician's able to find a gigantic hole, hole in hole in the wall that leads into an alternate dimension, which just happens to be where the where a bunch of where where a bunch of like warriors who just stole the crystal skull just happened to be. It's all absolute coincidence. Um, same thing also with uh, him hiring a along with him hiring and hiring an electrician who also is a part-time adventurer and knows how to deal with these sorts of things again it's all absolute coincidence and i'm gonna tell you right now guys when your entire movie is based totally is just totally on coincidence the writing comes off as just a little bit lazy now mind you that honestly is not me saying that the writing here is bad it's just that at points it's incredibly lazy uh, in fact, nothing here happens happens with 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 any kind of logic. It all happens because oh, pff, why not? What do you know? There it is. You know, it's very very odd, and you and you are able to look you know past that very very easily. It's just that um, it is just that everything else, and that's partially because everything else here is incredibly strong. I mean, if if you're able to look past. Uh, once more, all of the fucking all the fucking coincidence that just seems to just get drilled in into this movie. We have a really strong and sound story. Uh, at times, at times, it, at times, it can be incredibly funny, and that's something you're always looking for with a horror comedy. But this movie, when it comes to comedy, it's very, very weird, because when most people say that the jokes in a movie are hit and miss, that usually that usually means that it's not quite like a perfect balance. It's usually something maybe like a it's usually it's usually a sixty forty split between good or bad, or sixty forty between you know bad or good. Swear to God, with this thing, it is a fifty fifty. Split for for every single really funny joke, which is guaranteed to at least make you smile. There's there is there is a there 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 is a joke that is that is that is just shitty enough to balance everything out, and that is where John Ratzenberger's character comes in, Bill, who is who is our who is our electrician slash adventurer. Everything he does is supposed to be played up, played up for laughs, and that entire and that character's entirety, all like five minutes he is in the movie, is an absolute comedic black hole. Every time he opens his his, his mouth, comedy dies slightly, which is funny because I could have sworn that because I could have sworn that Ratzenberger was able to make damn near anything work. Apparently, I was wrong because they saddled him with the shittiest character in this entire movie. Now, beyond him, uh, the only other character who really comes off as just an absolute waste of everything is Bill Maher's character, and uh, Bill Maher also in this film is incredibly forgettable because he also is in the movie for maybe about seven minutes at best, um, which is probably good because his, because his character is a smarmy, irritating douchebag, but then again that seems to be all that Bill Maher know, knows how to play, uh, so we do have that going on. But 
Ev but almost but literally every other character is played up incredibly well and every other character is likable to some point. It's just it's just Mar and Ratzenberger both got just, you know, saddled with absolute garbage for characters. <laughs> In fact, the movie would probably be, you know, a little bit better if neither of those characters were there. But that's just me. Now, um, so yeah, guys, writing here is well. Writing here in terms of story is really sound. Comedy is comedy is uh, is literally an almost perfect fifty fifty split between really good jokes and really god awful ones. Uh, so yeah, like writing here is a little little bit of a mixed bag. The acting though, the acting though is great, and I'm and I'm gonna say that even though that even though I'm dumping on uh, Mar and Ratzenberger's characters, the two of them turned in really really good showings. I just wish that they had better. But I wish they had better characters to play as. Uh, so yeah, guys, uh, and everybody else in the cast is turning in a fantastic showing. The cast here is awesome. And all of them are turning in an absolutely amazing showing. And uh, this right here is one of those films, guys, where you get to hear the where you get to hear the vocal talents of Frank Welker absolutely shine, because he voices he voices every every single bizarre little creature they happen to run into, and he's also the voice of the final villain. Uh, and of course, it is just basically Welker just doing what he what he does best. So I mean, you know, the acting here from everybody is just absolutely amazing. And while I'm on the subject of the goofy little creature who they happen to run into in this film. Special effects. A whole lot of the special effects are done with stop motion, and it is some of the best stop motion I have ever seen. In fact, right towards the end, you see a skeletal zombie horse which still has flesh hanging off the bones, and the person who was doing the who's doing the stop motion in, in instead of instead of just leaving instead of just leaving the meat to just sort of hang which is what a lot of animators would have done they went and animated every strip of flesh and it looks incredibly realistic it is by far the best effect in the entire movie everything that isn't done with uh, stop motion and everything that is not makeup effects by the way makeup effects on this thing are really good too is done with puppets and the and the and the puppet work here is really good. Oh, and by the way, since I was talking about stop motion, everything else here in terms of stop motion is also amazing. But it all pales in comparison to the three second shot of, of the fucking zombie horse we see towards the end. That is, again, that is probably one of the best stop motion effects I've ever seen in the history of film. That was amazing. And the puppet work here is also, is also really good, except for one shot. And... Uh, Again, it's probably it's it's probably just because I have a bad habit of noticing this sort of shit. Anyway, at one point we 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 do have, we do happen to see a puppeteer's arm jutting out of that half beagle, half fucking like caterpillar thing. Uh, but hey, you know what? That's totally fine. All right, because frankly, I am probably the only human being on the planet who noticed it. Uh, and you probably have to be looking incredibly hard to even notice something like that. But you know that is still something that is worth kind of mentioning. Special effects here, guys, everywhere are just awesome. The music here is also really good. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, score from this film is composed by the is or, or yes, yes, it, it was composed, I believe, by the same guy who did the score on the first House movie, and it really kind of shows. Except here, he also was able to sort of he 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 was able to sort of like play around a little bit, and he was able to do a slightly more light lighthearted score. And it was great. It really worked for him. It was just, it was really an awesome score. However, unlike, unlike House, this one, this one did not have any sort of like, any sort of like licensed uh, music anywhere, which is probably fine. I mean, that is, I mean, because, you know, frankly, that actually, uh, now, honestly, that I'm thinking, thinking back on the first House movie, it actually kind of sort of took, it, it, I mean, because it actually kind of took fucking away from the movie when you were jumping into songs that, that you actually know of in order to sort of punch up you know comedy but here but here none of that was needed because the actual comedy writing when 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 it when it was good was great uh, the score here though absolutely fantastic um lighting here is really good sound mix is really good the camera work is solid uh ultimately guys am i able to recommend house 2 
I can certainly recommend it a little bit more than than the first house, but then again, that is because I still find the first house to be incredibly creepy. And if and if you're looking for an incredibly creepy film, the first movie's great. Uh, however, though, if you are looking for a much more light-hearted horror, you know, comedy, House Two is a fantastic way to you know go. This this really is, guys, an absolutely solid film. Well, it's mostly solid film. Um, Again, again, it does have a couple of really minor, minor, like, rough edges on it. However, however, it's very easy to essentially look past a whole lot of those, you know, rough edges and still see a, a genuinely good film here. Um, so, yeah, guys, if now, if you can find a copy of this somewhere, preferably incredibly cheap, by all means, pick it up. I'm really not sure if this thing is on, like, Hulu or Netflix or anything, so you might actually want to search o o over there first. But, yeah, guys, um, I, I, I genuinely can, you know, say that House, that, that House 2 is certainly worth, is certainly worth at least checking out. However, I am not, I am not able to 100% promise that you are, that, that you are going to enjoy it. Because, well, once more, the humor is definitely very, very mixed. Uh, so anyway, guys, yes. Now, because this is Fan Appreciation Month, House 2, the second story, came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in is Matthew, and Matthew wants me to promote a Facebook page. That page is facebook.com slash guardians of Luna. Once more, that is facebook.com slash guardians of Luna. I will put a link to that, to that Facebook page in this video's de description. Swing over there, check it out. I still haven't had a chance to go over there and look. I have no clue what in the hell I'm sending. I am sending you guys to. I just know that it's a Facebook page. And uh, Matthew, thank you, man, because uh, you know, I really, I really was sort of having a little bit of doubt going into this one, especially after, especially after the first house kind of left me incredibly creeped out for quite literally hours because. Because I because I just kept thinking about it and it just kept popping in even more and more dark dark bullshit and the tone of the film hours after watching it got darker and darker and darker. There's no way in shit that is happening with this thing. <laughs> um, and both films were certainly were, were certainly really good. Uh, and once more, Matthew, I thank you, dude, for you know sending them in because I have always been curious about the house films and I do know that there is, that that there are two more movies that are part of the house series uh only fucking one of them ac actually counts and that one is house four and hopefully at some point i will find a copy of house four somewhere and i will give it and i will give it a re and i, uh, I will give it a review however though right now just having seen the 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 first two i can't i can say that both films are certainly you know worth it so yeah once more guys if you honestly can't can find either either film check them out however you really do have to be warned that there that there are some issues with both of them one of them has 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 a fucking tone that can get incredibly dark if if you happen to look at it the the wrong way the other one has humor that falls absolutely dead however though both films are still totally worth checking out so yes guys with that we come to the close of another reaction and review until next time ladies and gentlemen take care and i will see you all in the near future peace